Have you ever wondered about the two primary types of trials outlined in the Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita, better known as the BNSS? Today we are going to delve into this fascinating piece of legislation and its significant role in the Indian legal system. The BNSS is a cornerstone of the Indian juridical structure. It meticulously lays out the procedures for the investigation, inquiry, trial, and dealing with offenses under its purview. This comprehensive legal document is instrumental in maintaining law and order in the country, and it's a testament to the robustness of the Indian judicial system. One of the standout features of the BNSS is its clear demarcation of two primary types of trials, regular trials and summary trials. Each has its unique characteristics and is designed to deal with different kinds of offenses. Regular trials, as the name suggests, are the standard mode of trial for all offenses under the BNSS. These are comprehensive proceedings that include offenses punishable with seven years of imprisonment or more. Regular trials are the backbone of the BNSS, ensuring that the gravest offenses are dealt with in a meticulous and just manner. On the other hand, summary trials are streamlined procedures designed to expedite the trial process for less serious offenses. These include instances such as theft, receiving or possessing stolen property, unauthorized entry into a house, disturbing peace, and criminal intimidation. Governed by sections 283 to 287 of the BNSS, summary trials offer a swift and efficient legal recourse for these types of offenses. The carefully crafted structure of the BNSS ensures that every type of offense has a clearly defined path to justice. Whether it's a major crime or a minor infraction, the BNSS has a defined procedure to ensure justice is served. Now that we've introduced the BNSS and its two primary types of trials, it's time to delve deeper. Let's dive into the specifics of these two types of trials and their implications. Firstly, we'll discuss regular trials as outlined in the BNSS. Regular trials, as defined by the Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita, or BNSS as it's known, form the backbone of our legal system when dealing with offenses. These trials are comprehensive, encompassing every step of the judicial process from investigation to judgment. So let's delve into this a bit more. Every offense under the BNSS is subject to a regular trial. But what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that these offenses are investigated, inquired into, and tried according to the provisions contained within the Sanhita itself. It's a bit like having a detailed guidebook that dictates how each offense should be handled. Now, this might sound a little complex, and indeed it can be. The BNSS is a comprehensive document, filled with legal jargon and specific procedures. But at its core, it's really about ensuring that every case is handled with the utmost care and respect for the law. So, what kind of offenses are we talking about here? Regular trials cover all offenses, but they particularly deal with those punishable by seven years of imprisonment or more. This is where the stakes are high, and the need for a thorough, detailed and fair trial is paramount. Imagine for a moment that you're a detective working on a case. You've gathered evidence, interviewed witnesses and built a case. Now it's time to bring the suspect to trial. With the BNSS, you've got a clear path to follow. You know exactly what steps to take, what procedures to follow, and how to ensure that justice is served. That's the power of the regular trial. But it's not just about the investigation. The BNSS also provides guidelines for how the trial itself should be conducted. This includes everything from how evidence is presented, to how arguments are made, to how the final judgment is reached. It's a comprehensive system designed to ensure that every case is handled with the same level of care and attention. It's important to note, however, that while the BNSS provides a framework, it's up to the legal professionals involved to bring it to life. It's their knowledge, their expertise, and their commitment to justice that truly make the system work. So, there you have it. Regular trials, as outlined in the BNSS, are a comprehensive, detailed, and robust system for handling offenses. They ensure that every case, no matter how big or small, is treated with the same level of care and respect, and they provide a clear path for legal professionals to follow, ensuring that justice is always served. That's a brief overview of regular trials. Now, let's move on to summary trials. Summary trials, the second type of trial under the Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita, or BNSS, 
are designed for less serious cases. This streamlined process is for offenses that, while they may disrupt the peace and order of society, do not warrant the more extensive procedures of a regular trial. These less severe cases often include crimes such as theft, receiving or possessing stolen property, unauthorized entry into a house, disturbing the peace, and criminal intimidation. While these offenses might seem minor, they can have a significant impact on the victims and the community. Therefore, it is crucial to deal with them swiftly and efficiently, ensuring justice is served without unnecessary delay. The BNS has specific provisions found in sections 283 to 287 that govern the conduct of these summary trials. These sections outline the procedures for the court, detailing how to handle these cases and what steps are to be taken to ensure a fair trial. The goal is to expedite the legal process, reducing the time between the crime and the verdict. This expedited process does not mean the accused's rights are compromised. Instead, the summary trial is designed to balance the need for quick justice with the rights of the accused. The accused still has the right to a fair hearing, to present a defense, and to legal representation. Summary trials therefore serve a dual purpose. They help to quickly resolve less severe cases, reducing the burden on the courts and the accused, while also ensuring that justice is dispensed effectively. It's a practical approach that recognizes that not all offenses require the same level of scrutiny, and it's a testament to the flexibility and adaptability of the BNSS. Summary trials provide a quick and efficient process for dealing with certain offenses, but what if the accused is not present? The BNSS has provisions for that too, which we will explore in the next section. The BNSS also allows for something called trials in absentia. In the intricate tapestry of legal proceedings, trials in absentia represent a unique thread. This concept, formalized under Section 355 of the Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita, or BNSES, allows a judge or magistrate to conduct a trial even in the absence of the accused. Let's delve a bit deeper into this. The law stipulates two specific conditions under which a trial in absentia can be conducted. The first condition is when the personal attendance of the accused is deemed unnecessary for the interests of justice. This is a discretionary power given to the judiciary to ensure that the wheels of justice keep turning, even if an accused person is unable or unwilling to be present at their own trial. The second condition under which a trial in absentia can occur is when the accused persistently disturbs the proceedings in court. This provision is designed to ensure that the court can function smoothly and effectively without being hindered by disruptive behavior. So, how does this work in practice? Well, if either of these conditions is met, the judge or magistrate can decide to proceed with the trial in the absence of the accused. This decision is not taken lightly and is only used in circumstances where it is in the best interest of justice. It's crucial to remember that a trial in absentia doesn't mean the rights of the accused are ignored or bypassed. The accused is still entitled to legal representation, and the trial must still follow the principles of fairness and impartiality. Trials in absentia are a powerful tool in the judicial arsenal, ensuring that justice is served, regardless of the presence or absence of the accused. It's another testament to the flexibility of the BNSS, adapting to the dynamic realities of the legal landscape while ensuring that justice is never compromised. Trials in absentia are another aspect of the flexibility and comprehensiveness of the BNSS. In this video, we've explored the two primary types of trials outlined in the BNSS. Regular trials encompass all offenses under the BNSS, including those punishable with seven years of imprisonment or more. They are comprehensive and thorough, ensuring that justice is served in the most severe cases. We've also delved into summary trials, an expedited process designed for less serious offenses, such as theft or disturbing peace. These trials, regulated by sections 283 to 287 of the BNSS, provide a swift and efficient resolution, balancing the scales of justice and the interests of society. Moreover, we've touched on the concept of trials in absentia under Section 355 of the BNSS. This provision allows a judge or magistrate to conduct a trial without the accused's presence under certain circumstances, ensuring that court proceedings are not unduly disturbed. We hope this overview provides a clearer understanding of the trial process under the BNSS. Stay tuned for more insights into the Indian legal system.